for real, there's no reason to pretend If I do it once, I do it again Add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, your roll, your roll, pay so, pay so, add it up, add it up, I'm just doing me, everything is on me, oh you matter what Add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, your roll, your roll, pay so, pay so, add it up I'm just doing me, everything is on me, oh you matter what Add it up, told her if it's all me, everything is on me, go and back it up Matter what, told you I'ma do me, why you hating on me, it's not adding up Oh, 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 we got the frog. What's up, guys? Good morning, and welcome back to another episode on the Weston Smith channel. Devin and I are out here in East Texas on our last day of our four-day send, man. We've hit, like, uh, three different lakes on this trip. It has been absolutely amazing. We came back to one of our favorites, Lake Kurth, the place you have to get a permit just to fish. It's gated, and it is very unique. Um, crystal clear water. Stumps. Gotta be careful. These guys know how to run it. There's a couple boaters that got here just before us. The ramp is busy this morning, like five other boaters here besides us. I lost about a four pounder the other day. Everyone has to sign in and sign out when you arrive and when you leave. You're also supposed to log your catches. One boat yesterday logged three fish between four and seven pounds. So if we can get on a little bite like that, catch some bigs, that would be a good old time. It's also alligator infested waters. Devin and I saw multiple gators the first time we came over here. Real unique for a little Texas spot compared to what we're used to. We're gonna head straight over to where we got some catches last time and try and get on them. Look at this guy, cruising, cruising, right there. Grab that, grab that, please. Yeah. Grab it, please. Oh, God. Nope. Oh, what's happening? Where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> that was total that sight was cool. fishing. <laughs> that was total sight fishing. What? <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> There's so much shape in here. They're so weird. <laughs> he, like, has no fight. He did, he did not even care. <laughs> like, oh my God. I didn't know. Good morning, guys. First fish on the line for me. This is my first fish out of Kurth when we were here a couple days ago. Uh, I got skunked. So here we go. These guys are oddly misshapen. Like, look how sunk in his eyes are and like his weird shape. These were like some of the other bass that you were catching the other day. But super cool catch. It was almost like sight catching, but I'm, I don't even care. I'll take it. It was really awesome to see him hit the chatterbait, uh, just kind of popping it through these holes of grass. Obviously, y'all can't really see it. But anyways, let's go ahead, get him back in the water. We're going to get some more uh, time check. It's 7.04. Been out here for about 30 minutes. I got one. I thought that was grass. I think I got one. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. He's shaking. I got him, I got him, I got him. Nice. Right above the grass. There we go. He took us down in it too. I thought I was, I'm like, do I have just grass? It just got heavy. The bite here is so subtle, man. It's nuts. You think you're in the grass. Nope. That's a fish on. Just felt those head shakes. And then I even questioned myself after he took me down in the grass. I was like, do I really have a fish? <laughs> Ended up working out. Chatterbait killing it. Natural colors, man. This one actually looks, this is the healthiest looking bass that we've caught out of this place. Actually kind of fat. Nice. Look at that little salad he's got for breakfast. All right, that was cool. Let's get him back in the water. Hey, the nigga from the boat, 
Oh, here's one. Little guy. Little guy. He sees us. He's swimming away. Right here. Uh, two little guys. All right, guys, we're putting up the glide bait. I've thrown it a fair amount at this and one other spot on this trip with no bites. We're gonna try something a little different. We're gonna break out the big guns, the Mega Bass Garuda. You thought the glide bait was big. Well, this is kind of next level right here. We're gonna see what happens. It's got this bill. He'll dive a little bit, but he might also just stay subsurface. We're going for the bigs with this one. I don't know if it's going to attract any bites, but I doubt they've seen one of these out here. And if they have, they have. But surely less likely than most anything else you could tie on. I'm about ready to get this thing in the water. All right, now this is what this reel was made for right here. Tranks 400. It takes a lot to crank this big old bait. I mean, you've probably never felt so much resistance reeling something in like this. Oh my gosh, it's going crazy. It is going crazy. This is good. Whoop. Guys, the more shallow bite seems to have died off. So what we're going to do, we're going to switch the perspective mode mount into down imaging and we're going to go out a little deeper we're going to see if we can't spot some fish in deeper water that'll switch from perspective to deep mode here in just a second or down mode sorry transducer has automatically changed well there's fish below us right now you guys we're out here hitting this hump there's uh grass close to the surface here in fact you can probably see it off the edge of the boat and then just to the left of the boat, it gets pretty deep pretty quick. In fact, let's zoom in. It goes from, it says we're sitting in 15 feet. It goes from 15 to like 26, 28 feet right here. So we're gonna cast all around the boat, see what's up. This was a, a spot one, another boat came to in the morning. It's also a spot we hit on the last visit. We didn't get any bites, but this could be promising this time of day. Uh, they got quick access to deep water, these fish do right here. If they're hanging out, they can come up and feed on bait that's hanging out in this area, that's up in the grass and up higher on that hump, and then they can drop right back down to the depths. So, let's see what's going on here. Drink it fast. <laughs> well, we've worked a lot of this hump, guys. I think we're going to make a move onto some points up further uh, straight ahead. All right, guys, we are really switching things up now. We have gone all the way across the lake. Let me show you guys what we're looking at here. All right. So, the ramp. I'm going to orientate this like if you were looking north because I don't know how to adjust the screen. So, basically, here's the ramp. Here's a lot of the reeds we were working the first day. Getting some catches over here. And now we hit that hump, right? Now we're over here on the far end, and we're just working all these points. Let me zoom in. So here's us, there's a boat off this point, there's a boat off that point. All working bottom baits at this uh, time now. It's a little slower, the moving baits are, uh, they're hanging out on the deck. We're both throwing weightless Sankos. I'm going weightless Texas rig. Devin is tossing the wacky rig. She had a couple bites, felt like bluegill though. So we might scoot off just a little bit deeper and just let these things fall slow. Probably gonna be our next hits is on the lunker logs. That was like a gar or something, but I just saw a bass blow up over here to our left. So I grabbed this little recon crank. I uh, set down the lunker log rod, but I opened the spool and uh, I got it still kind of between my feet here. So should be fine if anything were to hit it. I just want to get one more cast with this little recon and see if I can't get some action because there was definitely some bass. See, that, uh, that was not a bass either. Look, these things are all over though. Carp or gar or something, man, just chilling. Devin just brought up a good point. We need to see when our boats do for service. Uh, <laughs> I brought up the, uh, broke out the Mega Bass Garuda again, and she's throwing the Citizen now, the larger swim baits off this point. That could actually do pretty good. She's gonna be getting down there in the grass. I'm gonna be going a little bit higher, but such a big profile that uh, they'll definitely smash that. Let me, what was I gonna do? So what I was gonna do is show you guys the app where we can see if we need service or not. Uh, I forget what it's called. It's gotta be Mercury something. 
vessel view, Mercury vessel view. We either have eight total hours or we've got eight hours till the service, I think. Eight total hours, there's no way. I feel like we've driven this thing a lot, but when we go to these lakes, I guess we're just on the trolling motor all the time. Okay, just kidding. That was from a while ago. The key was in the off position. And so that was like from the last connect. So now it's scanning for devices and uh, I assume it's gonna pop up here in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just kidding. <laughs> Mercury vessel view has connected to the boat. Now let's go back to maintenance. There we go. Okay, we got 14.2. I hope you guys can see that. There we go. We got 14.2 hours on the boat. I think at 20, we're supposed to go get a service done. So that's that. And it tells you like when you're gonna need to get your belt, your fuel filter, spark plugs, all that stuff done. Uh, an inspection is due in 86 hours and then it's due for a replacement uh, on this bracket on the right. And it looks like we're due for an oil replacement in uh, 86 hours, which we won't hit that for a while. Yeah, it looks like it gets real shallow. It looks crazy. It almost looks like a highway. There's a turtle swimming right through it. This is super clear. It's an old road. Here's a big old bluegill. Monster bluegill. This is cool. Y'all, we are over in like an old road. Can you guys see this? Yes. Look at this thing. Look at that. There's the edge of it. It's so clear. Look at these shells. What? That was a bass. It got it. Oh, 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 we got the frog. Oh, uh, I didn't even hear. I didn't even see it. I'm like, your frog's gone. <laughs> I didn't see. I'm like, the bass just splashed. <laughs> oh, oh my, my God. God. All right, y'all, sometimes you just gotta venture back in these cuts. We were so skeptical and I didn't think we'd find anything of decent size. I mean, this guy's not a, uh, a dink, so we're happy with him. I'm gonna go ahead and let him go right back to the pads where he came from. We'll see you, bud. Thank you so much. What a good old fun time catching you on the froggy that I didn't even realize hit. Look at him cruising so slow. Literally zero cares. Look, he's just in the sunlight chilling. He's literally right here. Yeah guys, so we ventured back here. No one's come into the cuts. Everyone has been off the points or fishing deep today. That's usually what you do during summertime. We decided, let's just check it out. We come back here, we see more bluegill back here, more turtles, more signs of life, crystal clear water, probably better oxygenated. I, I don't know. I mean, it's like crystal, crystal, crystal clear. You guys just saw some of that underwater footage. I hear more fish in the background. My gosh, dude, we found colder water and it's just a perfect ecosystem, it seems. So sometimes you just got to venture back here. We looked at the pads and we thought maybe there's going to be some hiding under the shade and we'll throw the frog. I didn't figure we'd find anything of size. There we go with a two pounder. Super cool. It could be one of the last catches of the day because our checkout at the cabin this is the last day on our trip checkout at the cabin is fairly soon so we're gonna cast a little bit more don't think we're leaving just yet but we do have to get back up to Dallas area you guys so let's go ahead and get back on the water try and rip a few more lips before we got to call it oh damn there's like a multi-pounder you see him Wrong one. Here, I'll. You want me? Oh, there we go. Got him. I'm not recording. I don't have my GoPro on. My GoPro's dead. Oh no. Oh, he's oh, no. he's in a pad. Come here. No way. He's well, in. Devin a... just got one on the frog. We're just messing oh, around God. with all these angles. He's in a pad. No he's in all the pads. GoPro's dead over here. No batteries. <laughs> Oh, oh gosh. gosh, come here. Nice. <laughs> come here. All right. <laughs> so sick. <laughs> Filthy frog. That's your first frog hit of the, of the trip, right? Yeah, first catch. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I choked it. 
just when we thought that we were getting ready to head out we were just kind of messing around getting some underwater footage for you guys uh, here in this really cool clear area heard the bass start blowing up on some bait back here went ahead grabbed the frog my gopro just died you? i was recording report. sweet yes <laughs> oh my so God. you guys saw it uh, little did i know that i was even recording or did you hit record as you were reeling it in no it said four minutes oh hell yeah so anyways yeah, there we go. He wasn't going nowhere, guys. We're just hearing the bass like blowing up all around us, midday frog bite. But if you guys wanna pick up some of these filthy frogs and the saucy swimmers, they're all gonna be linked in the description below. We really appreciate you guys hanging out with us on this multi-day trip. Let's go ahead and get this guy back in the water. Guys, just got the hot tamale all cleaned up. We are back on land. We enjoyed this mini series so much. We hope you all did. Let us know in the comments below because we want to do this again. We stayed at Lake Nakanish Retreat right next to the Ramp Man. Beautiful place. We hit that lake and then every other day we hit a new lake. Didn't get skunked on any of the bodies of water. I really enjoyed the filmmaking process and also the side of uh, explaining these lakes, breaking them down, trying to give you guys insights in case you want to hit some new waters. Livescope helped us out so much on Nakanish because we learned about the thermocline layer and how these fish were all suspending like 10, 15 feet down. We were finding the bait down there and then we saw the bass. We we were cranking them and everything worked out so well. Thank goodness we got the setup over here on the boat. We hit more stumps than ever. We thought Lake Fork was bad. We hit like one stump on Fork and then we were in the running lanes. Out here, I don't know if there is a running lane. It's just all stumps and they're, it's not like they're everywhere. It's like they're just sporadic and they hit you real fast. Got to be careful. The engine died on one of the videos. It literally did like the automatic kill switch. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed everything, let us know down in the comments below. We're going to get this baby wrapped up, head back home, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.